I'm Elizabeth and I'm a potter. Um, I've got my own little ceramic studio which I run from the bottom of my garden. I've been a potter for three years now. Um, I've been selling for a year and a half. Uh, so I first started doing pottery when I was up in Edinburgh a few years ago. My great aunt is a potter and she, she makes absolutely beautiful uh, pieces of ceramics. And I'd always been really um, interested in sort of pottery because of that and I, I bought so much of her work and I used it every day and uh, then I thought when I was working in Edinburgh on a project and my social life basically revolved around sitting on the sofa with my dad and watching TV I thought I'd try a pottery course and I really enjoyed it then when I when I got my own wheel I essentially just practiced I wasted so much clay but um, I, I learnt quickly, I guess, and I, I had my laptop up in front of my wheel and I'd watch YouTube videos and there, there are some really good ones out there. And that was, that was really how I taught myself, just trial and error and a lot of mistakes and a lot of sort of clay flying across the studio and a lot of sort of frustration when something I made, you know, the bottom was too thick and it would crack. But the great thing about pottery is that you're, you're constantly improving and I'm sure I'll look back on pottery I'm doing now in a year's time and think, well, I could have done that handle nicer or I could have made that vase prettier, but just always looking out for ways to get better. I, I throw everything really. I don't. I don't use any other techniques like slab building or coil building, um, mainly because I really like the symmetry which you can get through throwing, um, and it's also just quite a nice thing to do. You know, you've got sort of this this ball of earth, and you sort of throw it down in the wheel, and you can turn it into pretty much any shape you want. Um, and I find that I find throwing really fun and really satisfying. Um, and then it takes a day for those to dry out because they have to be what's called leather hard, which is where you can sort of you can pick them up and you can you can move them um, and they won't they won't disfigure. Um, and that's when you trim them. You just smooth off any imperfections with that. You give it a foot ring if it's going to have a foot ring. And you can also do interesting things like the texture, like the grooves on the vases behind me. That that sort of thing is is what you do at this stage. Once it's completely dried out and it's sort of turned a turned a palish colour, that's when it's ready to be fired for the first time. Because if you fire it too soon, when it's still a little bit wet and there's water trapped in there, it will crack or even explode in the kilns. I then dip dip the pieces in in glaze, leave them to dry for a day or so, and then fire them to 1250 degrees. So it sort of it gets quite hot in quite hot in the studio, which is quite nice in winter time when. Um, it's all cold outside and I've sort of basically got three massive fires going. And then, yeah, it comes, it comes out the kiln and it's, it's ready to be used, really. I think there's sort of a certain charm to something which is homemade, like I've got some handmade spoons which someone's carved and I don't know, I think that... I think there's something really special about that and there's also something special about buying something from someone where, where they just are really happy to make a sale and rather than sort of going into Ikea and you know buying lots of plates there where the company on an individual basis won't really mind but to, to someone who makes it themselves it's really special.